relationship, but to our relationship, um, our relationship with God is, is on its greatest display in our relationship with one another. Man, yes. anybody ever notice that? Mm -hmm. It's on its greatest display because it's one thing to say that I'm a child of God. Yeah. I mean, anybody can say that. And you've seen anybody say anybody walks around with a Christian man. Yeah. But it is on greatest display in how we interact with one another. Amen. 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 So t today we want to talk about how we interact with one another. Amen. 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 So let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 14. I'm going to give that same amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 14. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone, make sure that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So this is something that the Lord has placed in my heart. And it, it's, it's going to be like a, a long road to get to my final point. So this is the But we know that Christ is soon to return. Yeah. And we get excited about this. Some of us get excited and some of us dread it. Some of us is like, not yet, Lord, I haven't bought my house. Not yet, Lord, I haven't. And this is, you know, wherever you are, it's okay. Um, Amen. But we know that it's happening because it's worse than it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And as we come to church from week to week, sometimes I think that we forget that there's something greater that's supposed to happen even before the rapture. Yeah. And that is how we relate to one another, Amen. how we display the love of Christ, how we share the love of Christ. Are we sharing the love of Christ? Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to just encourage us in, in how we treat one another. In um, 1 Timothy, he says that we should um, not repay evil for evil. And this is one thing, thank you, Jesus. This is one <laughs> thing that um, last night when I was sitting down, I was like, Lord, you know, as we, as we walk around and we call ourselves children of God, there's some things I think that we, we ignore in our behavior. Yes. You know, because uh, we don't curse, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't curse. You, you not, you're not gonna walk around saying I'm a, I'm a Christian and you're not cursing. And so you think it's you think you're okay. I don't curse, but you got some. Yeah. Just as bad. Right. And then you go, well, Lord, you know, I, I haven't I haven't stolen anything. I haven't robbed a bank. You know, I'm a, I'm a child of God. But you've cheated on your hours at work. Mm -hmm. oh. Right? You know, and this is things that, you know, honestly, we just sometimes we don't even think about. We don't think that they're a big deal because at the end of the day, I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. And that is true. You are a Christian. But even in being a Christian, you're still being perfected. Amen. Meaning you are not perfect. Yes. Meaning that it is still, you're still a work in progress. Amen. Um, Jonathan, can I borrow you for a second, please? <laughs> or maybe a few more minutes. <laughs> Hold this up. It's kind of rolled up. So um, the Lord gave me a couple of things that we kind of deal with as Christians with one another. So I'm just kind of spoke some of those out. Okay. Sometimes you know in church, and I, I mean I've grown up in church, so I've seen it a lot. And we see a lot of clicks, so we kind of clickish. Oh, yeah. And you know, many times we go, well, that's just because our spirits are yeah. praying with each other. We excuse it, right? Yeah. But how many of us have seen the disruption or the destruction of clicks? Yes. Yeah. They're destruct they're destructive within the church, right? right? And we have these cliques that tend to come within the church and it, it causes um others to feel less than or feel unloved or feel like they can't be a part. And sometimes it chases people out of the house of God. Yeah. And this is this is I'm talking about believers, so I want us to just be patient, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't we don't curse, right? We talk about that we don't curse, but sometimes we, we just gotta share our brothers and sisters' business and we find ourselves being gospelers. Mm. You know, sometimes unintentional, 
sometimes because you know what is about the heart the heart is deceitfully uh -huh. mm -hmm. our heart because you really can't trust your heart even as a Christian you really need to make sure it's safe in the Holy Spirit because your heart can convince you that when I told her I, we didn't see the pray about it, that it was really a clear case when it was truly a gospel case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And then there is the lack of respect for leaders. The lack of respect for leaders. You know, as Christians, we really shouldn't be tearing down the leaders of the nation. Hey, did you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. We really shouldn't be tearing down the leaders of our nation. Yeah. They may not be right. I'm not saying we walk in agreement with them, but the Bible tells us to pray for them mm -hmm. because they are his agents. Right? Mm -hmm. But we get caught up in politics and we get caught up in wanting to be right that we speak harshly and we tear down and we show lack of respect for our leaders in our nations, on our jobs, and in our churches. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this one, this one is real crazy. Mm -hmm. This one's crazy. You get to sit home. Sometimes we are just so full of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have, and this one goes with another one up here, and this is even too. Egotistical and self-righteous. Mm -hmm. They're brothers and sisters. They live together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just get so full of ourselves, and um, we really can't see our own flaws. Yeah. Because we, we, we're Christians, we are sealed, we are saved by grace, and so when we get there, and we find that we feel like we've arrived, we forget that we are still in a Fallen state. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. 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 High minded. That goes, I think that's a cousin of egotistical yeah. self righteous. Yeah. High minded. The scripture says that we should not think ourselves more highly than we are. Mm -hmm. And in fact, God encourages us to esteem one another higher than yeah. ourselves. Yeah. When I look at you, I should see someone and I consider greater than me. Not, I'm up here, I'm a great teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. So I don't look at myself, and I should not see myself as something so much greater. I'm up here because I'm greater. No, I'm up here because I'm a servant. Right. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve my brothers and sisters. I'm here to share. I am an agent of the Most High, and I share His gospel. I am not greater than anyone. But a lot of times we become high-minded because we're saved by grace. A lot of times we think we're better, you know, because I've been redeemed out of that. I no longer wear the muddy clothes. And that's wonderful, I no longer wear the muddy clothes. But how dare we look down our noses at the one who's still in the mud? Right, right. Aren't we supposed to actually reach down and pull them out? Amen. Then there's that, um, this one is a good one. We overeat. Mm. It's like, where does that fit in? <laughs> Where does that fit in with everything I said? It fits because gluttonous, right. Uh -huh. right, is a sin. And when we overeat, a lot of times I think, and I don't know if anybody would pay attention to that, but many times you overeat because you're afraid you're not going to get anything more later. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And I don't know if it's because maybe, you know, a time of property or just a lack of understanding, but we overeat just out of fear. Fear is not a God. Amen. Amen. We're proud. Wow. We're proud. Wow. I've been redeemed. I've been washed with the blood of the light. How dare you speak to me this? <laughs> How dare you look at me this way? Do you know who I am? I am a preacher, a teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. Wow. You listen to me. I know what to say and I know what to do. We get that way. Mm -hmm. How many of us see the televangelists? They are very proud. Mm -hmm. They get on TV and they, and they speak with this error of, of narcissism mm -hmm. that's just so disgusting sometimes because they've forgotten where they come from. We can't forget where we come from, amen, because just as quickly as you ran out of the mire, fall right back in, amen? amen. Lazy. Mm. Lazy. <laughs> there should not be those. These two words should not go into this into one sentence. You ready? Yeah. Lazy Christian. Mm. They don't work together. Mm -hmm. They don't. A Christian is a worker. Yeah. A true believer is a worker of the gospel. Yeah. They put their hands to the plow and they don't look back. They don't live in the bed. They don't live on their butts. Mm -hmm. They move. Mm -hmm. Lazy Christian, that doesn't work. It's an oxymoron. Wow. 
If you mm. really knew what a Christian was, you would know that they just, those two words just yeah. can't work together. Mm. Then we find ourselves extremely, there's another cousin of egotistical, judgmental. Mm. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Yeah. You know who that covers? Yeah. You. All. Everybody. Wow. All has sinned. Every last one of us. But we find ourselves, when we find it, when we look at our, our salvation being redeemed, we forget. Again, is that forgetfulness? Is that high-mindedness? Is that pride? We forget where we come from so when we see our brothers and sisters fall, instead of us reaching down and pick them up, we actually kick them. Right? Mm -hmm. We kick them. We sit on them because we gossip. We, this, is, this, is a, this is what's happening in the house, in the body of God. Oh, it should not be so. This one makes me sad because it shouldn't be, and it, it makes me question whether or not you really are listening to the Holy Spirit, but we color the truth. Hmm. Being raised in the church, I heard some very colorful messages. <laughs> and I think, I think even Paul talked about this. You gotta be careful for those who make up stories just to try to get the point across, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I don't really need to make up where I've been for you to understand where I am. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the truth of where I've been for you to understand. Does, it may not be as exciting as maybe your transition, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But there's so many who like, you know, the, the person who likes to say, um, um, I was home and it was me and my five kids and there was no food to eat. You know, they, they build this real big story about how, and they want to make it look like this is what God did. God does not need your stories. Wow. You know, it was me and my five kids and there was nothing to eat and I cried and I cried and I laid on my face and I prayed and you know, as I was praying and crying out to the Lord, an angel of the Lord came and spoke to me and as he was speaking to me, someone was knocking on my door and it was a brother from down the street. He bought me 12 bags of groceries and we were able to eat well for a month and it sounds beautiful. And the church gets excited and we get raptured up about what he's saying and no one ever pays attention. His wife's paying attention. That's a lie. <laughs> he's just doing it. He's coloring the truth to get you excited. Mm -hmm. Just coloring the truth to get you excited. When did God need storytellers? Have you read the Bible? Yeah. We don't need it. We don't need He doesn't need our, our extras if we just share the word. Yeah. And if your heart is really serious about learning and knowing God, you can get excited just from the word. Right. But we find ourselves, and that's that's one extreme. But then there's a small extreme where we find ourselves just not really telling the full truth. And it's something that I think I think that we don't we don't always recognize because we don't want to we don't want to think of ourselves as liars. That's why they use the word liar. We don't want to think of ourselves as liars. But there are times when we find that when someone when someone asks a question, we don't give a true yes or true no. But the scripture says that your yes be yes, mm -hmm. amen. And if yes, if you say yes and you don't want to explain, just say it. Keeps you from being a person who colors the truth. Put the crown away. There's just no need. Amen. Amen. Selfish. Uh -oh. This one breaks my heart. They all do, but this one breaks my heart. Because we are a one body. Mm -hmm. But we do things that hurt the body. Mm -hmm. And because we forget that we're one body, I can speak to my sister a certain way because of my selfishness. And I realize that what I say to her hurts me. Mm -hmm. It hurts her. And it hurts her because I'm being selfish. Because I'm thinking of only me. My left hand is only concerned with what my left hand wants to do. This is how ridiculous we act. My left hand decides that it wants to put my makeup on like this. And my face is going, what are you? We look ridiculous. But my left hand is just going to do what it's going to do. And the rest of my body is not understanding. We look like a fool because we're selfish. When you're selfish, you're foolish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? When you're selfish, you're foolish because you don't recognize that what you do affects more than you. Yeah. Yes. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Wasteful. That goes along with that overeating. You got the one that's afraid they're not going to get enough, so they eat too much, and the one that just feel like they're going to always get what they want, so they just toss it out, not considering how we bless someone else. We're wasteful. We should not waste the blessings of God. We should not. Everything I have came from God. 
Yeah. Everything I have yeah. came from him. Yeah. But sometimes we forget and we take for granted that he's going to always, you take for granted when you turn a boss on the water's going to always come out, oh, right? Yeah. And so sometimes when you brush your teeth, and I, I've been guilty of not hurting on myself, when you brush your teeth, the water's just running, mm -hmm. right? And you just wasted it, just wasted it. These are all resources God's given us, and we should be a little bit more aware of what we're doing. Turn the water off. <laughs> I know in America, water is plentiful, <laughs> especially in California. Mm. Right? In a drought. <laughs> but there, there are our brothers and sisters in other places that don't have that luxury. And so in, in respect for what God has given me, and I love my brothers and sisters, I need to be more mindful in how I use the resources God has given me. And our, our resources, our money, our you know things in our home, our food, our time. Let's not waste it. Amen. You look good? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <sighs> no respect for our spouses. Uh -oh. mm. Now this, okay, this is like the end of the message, but I'm gonna throw it out now. Okay, kind of. Earlier I said that our relationship with God is on its greatest display in our relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. And it is no more, that this is so much more true in our relationship with our husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Because I can treat Drea like the greatest person in the world. And you would look and say, wow, she loves her sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then you follow me home and I treat Pastor Ben like the worst person in the world. And then you know there's something wrong. Right. Right? Because it's easy for us to pretend. I only got two, three hours with you a week, right? Yeah. Pretend. I can pretend like I am the greatest Christian. I can smile. Oh, I just, oh, I just smile. The love of God is just so strong in me for you. You are just so beautiful. And then when I go home to the one I live with, mm -hmm. and I tear him down, I speak awfully to him. Yeah. I ignore him as if he's not there. Mm -hmm. I don't take care of my house. It's filthy. There's nothing there ready to eat. Mm. I don't do anything I'm supposed to do. But the love of Christ is in me. The love of Christ is on its greatest display uh -huh. in my home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If he's in me, he's going to be on his greatest display in my home because at home is when you truly test it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Right? Amen. You can't hide at home. Mm. You can't. They know every dirty little secret yeah. at home. Yeah. So you can't hide, and you can only pretend for so long, right? right? So if Christ is in you, he better be in you in your house. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Busy body. Oh. There was a scripture, and I, I fell to write it down, but he said, mind your own business. Yes. I can see it just as clear as day. Oh my. And then I'll start sharing with you my opinions. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk to the Lord now. Mm -hmm. I'll start sharing with you my opinions that can, in turn, steer you the wrong way. Oh. Right? And I'm learning, Nicole herself is learning with her very opinionated self. It's, it's just true. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm learning before I share, I talk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because unless you are the person in the situation, you really don't know the truth of the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell you my side, right? And I can make it sound great. Mm -hmm. And now that you're looking at Ben as if he just grew another head with six more toes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and being an opinionated person, I can get to the point where I'm not even willing to hear his side. But at the end of the day, my side, his side, that's not the case. What does God say? Yes. Right? right. Mm -hmm. What does God say? My side may be my truth. Don't make it the truth, but it's my it's truth. truth. Because I'm, I see through my rose-colored glasses. They're rose-colored, and I can only see clearly if my head is turned just so, mm -hmm. right? But it's my truth. Right, right. And I can share with you my truth. 
But if you allow me to share with you my truth and you not take it to the Holy Spirit, you have missed so much 